When you attach your self-worth to your success, you are basically signing up for a tumultuous roller coaster that can pull you any direction, any which way, at any time with no warning. And you're basically signing up to have your self-worth, your confidence be dictated by accomplishment and outside forces that you can't completely control. And this is a very volatile and damaging way to live, but I think it's kind of all of our natural instinct, especially living in a super individualist culture like America has a super individualized culture that really prioritizes and values individual accomplishment, success, money. It's very, very natural existing in a culture like this to feel like metrics of success, whether that is money or accolades or praise, whatever it is, is the end all be all and is the best metric for deciding your worth. But what I'm going to argue in this video is that there is a better and healthier way to live and it is possible to detach your self worth from your success. This is really about taking back your power and your control over your mental health and your self esteem instead of letting it be whiplashed around by the things that are happening in your life or whether or not your boss likes your most recent project, whether or not a certain post that you put on the internet gets as many likes as the last one. This is about detaching how you feel about yourself from all of that noise and all of those external validation type of factors. So how do we do this? How do we detach ourselves from success and learn to redefine our worth in other terms, in terms that we can control and that feel a lot better? So let's talk about some strategies that you can use. The first one is pretty simple, but it is just to reattach attach your self-worth to doing your best. This is something I've heard repeatedly from multiple self-help books, specifically The Four Agreements and You Are a Badass are two books that I remember mentioning this. If you have been to my channel before, you know that I'm a bit of a self-help book nut. I love a good self-help book. Basically, both of these books talked about the importance of doing your best and how it can save you from a lot of the mental negative repercussions that come with failure. If you do your best on a certain project or task, failure is a lot easier easier to swallow because you can rest easy knowing you did all you can. It takes away some of the feelings of guilt or dissatisfaction because you know that in that moment you gave that assignment or that project everything that you had, you did the best that you possibly could with your current abilities and therefore it's going to be a lot easier to cope with possible negative feedback or to deal with maybe a project failing because you know you gave all you had and that's all you could do. I have a little quote here from You Are A Badass that is talking about exactly this. There's no faster way to fall prey to outside input than when you're feeling insecure. And there's no better way to feel insecure than knowing you have asked something or don't really believe in what you're doing. If you do the absolute best you possibly can and come from a place of integrity, then you can be proud of yourself and not give a damn what anyone else thinks. And that kind of perfectly encapsulates what I'm talking about here. If you're proud of what you've done and you feel solid and you feel like you acted with integrity, did your very best, that's the results. That's all you need. And then, you know, any positive input from others, any success or results that come are just a bonus. How it's received is just the icing on the cake. Camera died. <laughs> Sorry if the frame changed a little bit. I feel like it did, didn't it? Well, <laughs> it is what it is. So I do want to address that obviously not all of us are in the position of privilege to completely detach from results and success, right? We kind of have to care about making money, making our boss happy, keeping our job. If we're trying to build a business, we need to care a little bit about numbers and results, right? So I want to acknowledge that, that it's important to still be strategic and to still be trying to succeed. But I think the key here is not to throw success or striving for success out the window, but to be attaching your satisfaction and your sense of pride to the effort, to the doing your best part of it versus the results. You can still strive for results while mentally detaching from that a bit and not letting the numbers or the success sway you, but instead focusing on, okay, I did my best. Maybe the results aren't 100%. Now I know more information. I can do my best again. I can try again and maybe things will go a little bit better this time. But you're not as attached to the like unpredictable sharp turns of the roller coaster that is success accomplishment. It's also not always going to be possible for you to show up as your best self every single day. So I think it's important that when we're talking about doing your best, we take into account that you need to do your best from where you're at that day, from what your capacity is that day. And that's not always going to look the same. Some days your best is going to be all the way up here and other days your best is going to look like the bare freaking minimum. And that's okay. That's just human nature. That's what it's like to be a human. But even on your bare minimum days, do the 
the best that you can with the capacity you have on that day. Obviously be gentle with yourself, don't overexert, but always be striving to do the best you can with whatever state you're in on a day to day. I also think it's important to prioritize doing things that recharge you so that you can show up as the best version of yourself. You know, getting enough sleep, eating well, drinking enough water, taking breaks when you need it, making sure that you're resting. All of these are things that you can do to help recharge yourself so that you are showing up as this high capacity, high performing, motivated, energized version of you and not this very low energy, again, bare minimum version of yourself. This isn't always gonna be possible. Sometimes you just get hit by a freaking bus. Sometimes you're having a bad mental health day or you're just exhausted for no reason. And that is all very natural and very okay. But there are actions and things that you can do to try and have more of those high capacity, high vibe days so that you can show up as your best self and do your best as your best self. This strategy can also bring you a lot of peace when you're tackling or trying to do things that are a little outside of your comfort zone or a little past your capacity. Like if you are taking on a job that is a little out of your comfort zone or you've never done this specific type of role before or you're taking on a project that you quite honestly don't know how to do and you're kind of winging it and learning as you go. When you're doing these things that are kind of out of your comfort zone and difficult for you, you can find a lot of peace in the fact that as long as you do your very best with the knowledge and resources that you have, you are succeeding. That is all you need to worry about. And if you finish the day knowing you did your best, it doesn't matter the quality of work that you got done, whether or not you look stupid in front of your peers because you didn't know some certain formula that they all know. None of that shit matters. You can go to sleep at ease knowing that you did your very freaking best with where you're at. And that's all you needed to do. This was a huge sort of comfort for me when I started my current job because I really did take that pressure off myself by being like, Riel, all you gotta do is show up and do your best. Don't worry about the fact that you don't know certain things. Don't worry about looking stupid. Forget all of that. Forget even impressing the people around you. All you have to do is show up and do your best. And that really did help me manage my anxiety and stress in those first few days of the job because I was a lot more comfortable with not knowing everything and being the new girl and not having the experience because I was approaching things with this very open-minded and effort-focused approach. Very much going off of my last point, I think something else that is extremely valuable is setting effort-based goals. Great example of this, I talked about in last week's video, my December monthly reset, how my views, my subscriber growth, etc., for my YouTube channel in November were just below the goals I had set. They were kind of disappointing numbers. And because I noticed that, and I noticed the fact that I was feeling a little down, I decided to shift the goals that I made for the next month to effort-based goals. So instead of setting a goal like get 4,000 views, I would set a goal like upload X amount of videos, work on editing for three hours uninterrupted without my phone, try out a new font, look for new music selections. These are all goals that are 100% in my control and based solely on the efforts that I'm putting in and not on the results. And if you find that you're not achieving a lot of your goals that are more number based or something that rely on external circumstances, things that you cannot completely control yourself and you find yourself getting down when these goals are not being achieved, I strongly encourage you to shift your goals to effort based goals. Even something simple like say you're getting tripped up with work and you're worried that your presentation isn't good enough or this project you're working on is gonna go over terribly when you show it to everyone. If those things are really bogging you down and stressing you out, set yourself a very simple goal. Like I'm gonna set a 25 minute timer, work on this project. I'm not gonna worry about how good it is or whether it's impressive or any of that shit. I'm just gonna sit down at my computer for 25 minutes uninterrupted. And if I work for 25 solid minutes without getting distracted, I'm gonna be super freaking proud of myself. Maybe I'll give myself a little reward. I'm gonna feel proud, I'm gonna feel accomplished and that's gonna be me achieving a goal. That's a very perfect and simple way to really detach from all the worries about how this thing is gonna be received, how it's gonna go over, whether or not it's gonna be successful, and instead refocus on the role that you have, which is just showing up, doing the goddamn work, and putting something out regardless of the quality or whether it's perfect. The last kind of tip or strategy that I wanna give is to make sure that you have other sources of meaning and validation outside of performance-based activities. That's quite a mouthful, so let me kind of break down what I'm talking about. What I mean by this is you should not have your entire self-image, your entire life meaning, and all of your validation being tied up in your career or even 
a performance-based activity like being a really talented painter or making YouTube videos. These things are good and they can be a source of meaning and validation for you, I'm not saying that they shouldn't be, but they can't be all you have. <laughs> I think it's super important to have certain hobbies or aspects of your life that are completely detached from performance and accomplishment, where you're not concerned with doing this thing well. Something you're okay with being bad at or that gives you meaning and satisfaction in a way that has nothing to do with hard work, whether this is a friendship in your life that is just goofy and fun and you don't have to worry about working hard or being impressive or this is a frivolous hobby like basket weaving that you don't care if you're good at it and you you have no intention of selling those freaking baskets no matter what it is I think it's important that you have things in your life where being good at it or performing is not even on the radar you are way more concerned with having fun enjoying it and being present and that is meaningful and validating and adding to your life so I just want to leave you guys on that little note that I think it's important to not have your entire identity wrapped up in performance-based things, whether that is a career, a hobby, or your income. So we're gonna wrap this video up here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and got something from it. If you guys have any thoughts on this topic, make sure to leave them down in the comments. I love chatting with you guys and hearing your input about all the subjects that we talk about on this channel. And if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Brielle. I make all sorts of videos about post-grad lifestyle, self-improvement, productivity, and I would love if you would stick around. I love you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing week and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. Yeah. Baby said that they don't got a future, future like that. It burns, so give him something worse to kill his head with, make him forget somehow. Might be that another day she would have wished he stayed, but they're